a pleasant afternoon, a bird, it's a plane, what is it? It's a 1960 Chevrolet Parkwood four-door wagon. Maybe the most unique vehicle I've looked at this year. Not just because it's a wagon, but yeah, you caught a little glimpse of why. We'll get around this thing and uh, discuss it, try to describe it for the potential buyer who is taking a look at it, thinking about purchasing it, and wants to know it in greater detail. If that's the type of service you're looking for, you can call Auto Appraise, autoappraise.com, 800-301-3886. We shoot videos, at least I do here in Michigan, Northern Ohio, Northern Indiana, into Canada a wee bit, eh? And uh, we can put together about 300 photos in a test drive and a magnet test and a, just a full examination of the car to tell you what it is and what it might not be. Somebody put a lot of time into this vehicle, especially underneath. So I might start there. Not shabby paint either. All of these uh, flames are cleared over really, really nicely. Very, very minor um, contamination or flaws or chips or bubbles to speak of. I've got them all charted out for the potential buyer after I did the um, digital paint reading around the car. So there's the general look and feel of the vehicle. Well, let's take a peek underneath it. By the way, uh, code 903A, Cascade Green Poly, that's the color of this wagon. I don't know what color the accenting flames were, but they match nicely. Now that, my friends, is a very cool look. Monster rear end setup. Car's been completely back halved. I'll move up on it slowly. Real quick, we've got a fuel cell custom built in there. Drop sump. Holly uh, fuel pump and filter. <clears throat> you can see there's a little... How about I uh, turn a flashlight on here? There we go. You can see the uh, fuel pump has a little bit of uh, a carbon buildup on it. That's just because the exhaust uh, turns down over the axle and dumps right there. I think I'd spend 40 or 50 bucks on each tailpipe and extend them back here, let them dump out from underneath the vehicle. All of this uh, fabrication work is done really nice. Original uh, drain plugs, uh, die holes present original spot welds all along here so the back side of the vehicle is really super clean to begin with from a body standpoint uh, framework was done nicely rear bumpers uh, well supported as good or better than in the day another good look at the splash on that side I've got my tape measure in my pocket the uh, Tires are 33 by 22 by 15 Mickey Thompsons, and uh, those are some giant tubs. Narrowed Ford 9 inch QA1 adjustable coilovers, those are in nice clean shape. Slide under a little more. Uh, four link suspension setup. The potential buyer wanted me to focus on this rear end and talk about what the possibility would be of uh, putting some smaller tires on. I think it could happen. You'll notice up here in the gap between the inside of the tire and the rear on the driver's side and the frame rail, there's uh, plenty of room actually for the adjustment. The first thing I want to deal with is the adjustable four link if I can get the tailpipe out of the shadow there of my flashlight so 
measuring the wheel base uh, from the distance left to right, the whole forelink could be um, adjusted a half inch this way and uh, then recentered. This tire is just slightly closer to the outside body than the other one. But there's plenty of clearance all the way around and probably it drives down the road nicely. There's uh, snow on the ground again. We snowed here all weekend so won't be able to get a good test drive on it because of all the salt on the roads. But the rear end setup is uh, really nice. Let me go uh, hit the pause and get up to the uh, front frame connections. By the way, the car condition is mimicked left to right. I'll show you one side, and that's exactly what the other side has to offer. Nice factory spot welds on the bottom of the corner. And again, the distance here compared to the other side, if there was another half inch adjusted that way, uh, they'd be identical. Measured from the center of the wheel to the um, wheel lip, you can also see Nice original spot welds there. Bottoms of the rockers, original drain holes present. Likely some original paint there still. Excellent shape. Uh, wheel splash area, all very nice on both sides. Obviously extended. Floor pans still have original paint on them. Here's where these, uh, this is the first time you'll see a 59 or 60, 61 Chevy with the uh, mufflers on the insides of the rails, huh? My 63, these rails go right back down like a milk bone, so uh, different shape. The exhaust appears to be in really good shape. Uh, I don't see any patches in these floors, left or right. That's what it looks like all the way up. The welds all look good on the uh, ends of the frame rails where they put this whole section in and move the rails in. Uh, no fluid leaking out of the back of the axle housing. And there wasn't any fluid leaking on the floor underneath the transmission or the motor. It's been sitting here in a nice polished floor for quite some time. Floor supports are in really nice shape. Those are all fabbed and welded up. Those are not stuck. Inner rocker structure, nice and sound. Polished headers into a long collector, into um, uh, short intermediates, into some flow masters in the center of the body. Flow masters or similar, they look like flow masters, can't get low enough to see. Headers are in good shape, just a little bit of cosmetic uh, build up there. Lower control arm mounts are holding tubular uh, control arms. QA1s again, get a nice level ride, pan's in good shape, the ad on the vehicle said it was a turbo 350 but the pan to me looks like a turbo 400. Wheel tubs are again in nice shape, bottoms of the fenders in really nice shape, take a peek down the side of the car, very period straight. I'll show you a digital paint meter shortly. BFGs in the front, 15s again, treads nice, reproduction wheels and caps are in great shape, underbody's all been uh, painted, probably when it was taken apart. While I'm laying on my back there's a low lying chip right here when they were probably adjusting this bumper, that probably upset somebody. There's very little to discuss. There's a few little cracks and chips and nicks in the paint, but nothing that abnormal or unusual. Bumper chrome's in nice shape. They're three-piece units, front and rear, likely replaced. The grill was likely not replaced. A few dings left and right while I'm sitting in front of it. And down here, the headlight trim has got a little gack in it. Otherwise, the trim and the front grill look very nice. 
original lower aluminum plate. Let's get a look at the rack and pinion. Disc brake setup. Uh, tubular upper and lower, as I mentioned, I believe. I mentioned one, not the other, now that I think about it. QA1s I mentioned. A little bit of dampness near that engine mount. But nothing coming down on the floor. Car's been here almost three hours. There is a uh, transmission line splice for the tranny cooler. Actually, that might be where some fluid's dripping. There's a little bit of a buildup of fluid on that little rack and pinion uh, boot and beneath the mount. I think I would take this suspension apart and sand and paint these um, arms. Do a little bit of uh, cleanup work. Braided lines. The engine's real nice and clean underneath. Doesn't look like it has many miles on it. Wheel pan seal still looks like it's in good shape. Nothing different over here. Uh, frame rails left and right look like they're in uh, good shape here, both sides. No evidence of being uh, hammered and bent back, although there's lots of modifications done to the vehicle. So there we have it. That's our uh, underbody drop spindles. They're in uh, nice shape. Willwood calipers. A little bit of paint chippage under that left marker light on the valance. A little bit of wear on that aluminum panel. Ding there in the center of the uh, grill trim. And you see another little ding right there in the center of the center bar. Other than that, the trim is in pretty nice shape. All right, and a quick peek while I'm squeaking along the floor and down here anyway, but again, wheel splash area, very nice shape uh, frame. I'm getting in my own way here. Little oxidation there, but not a lot of oil leakage or anything like that seen on the exhaust. That's a good sign. Inner rocker structure looks identical all the way down. Bottoms of the rockers look very nice. Some, uh, you know, little chips and whatnot, paint wear general, but you can see the car's really, really original in a sense of an original body. And again, kind of period straight down the sides. Magnets uh, didn't show us any heavy uh, body work. Just one small area. I wasn't getting a reading on the other side. I'll show that to you shortly. Also, while I'm down on the ground on this side, a little... Uh, bubble, little swell, little nick, little nick right here. But the reflective quality is great. That trim's in really nice shape. Mirrors are in really nice shape. Door handles and side trim all in well survived shape. Some parking lot uh, pings and dings along those lower spears. Just a little general miscellaneous wear on the trim. We covered the wheels and tires. Let's finish talking about the bumpers. Not much to talk about, just a few little polishing marks and whatnot. No heavy pitting or decay. I'm guessing these were replaced or replated. Fit the body nicely, no real issues. Tail lights um, are in good shape, probably replaced. Uh, back here on the trim we have a few little dings and scratches miscellaneous little scuff mark there I know a wonderful trim guy who'd go to town on that stuff if it were removed and uh, he'd make it prettier uh, down along the side as mentioned earlier a few little pings and dings in this lower trim on both sides right into the doors Otherwise, there's not much really to talk about on the trim. All the glass is in really good shape and well survived. Just a tiny little nick right there. And a few uh, um, uh, vertical roller marks in the rear tail glass. Windshield's been changed aftermarket piece. Otherwise, the rest of them all have the original um, 
glass markings. Windows go up and down on this side nicely. I didn't test the other side yet. Very cool green tint. And again, just a few small little pings or dings in various locations. Still photos again on all of this stuff. If you're watching this video, someone's planning on buying this car and only they are going to see this video first. You may see it later after they already bought the car or passed on it. Either way, thanks for hanging out. If you need an inspection like this, I gave you my information earlier and I'll give it to you one more time at the end. Well, let's discuss the paint. Meters at 15, I've got a little weakness in my LED. I've gone all around the vehicle and documented there's 10. I've got all the spots along the doors and the rockers and the wheel lips and whatnot. Here's an exploded view to give us a little information. There, there it's in focus. So I know that looks like a lot. But I'm trying not to litter the paperwork so it's easy to read. But the readings, 21, 17, 14, oops, I'm not pointing at the 15, 15, 16, 12, anything below 22 to 25 um, mil thickness on the gauge, a refrigerator magnet will stick to that, a little business card refrigerator magnet. And really, there's great readings all the way, mostly in the lowers and in the teens, all around the car. One little area behind the uh, passenger side tire I couldn't get to read. So there's one small area of repair right down in there. So these marks, these are little chips or nicks or scratches, a quarter inch or less. Uh, this little two inch swell I will show on the back door on the other side because it's one of the probably larger flaws on the car. A couple bolts underneath the hood that need to be touched up. They're not uh, plated bolts. Um, real quick, a little tiny ink pen size, bulb point pen size or smaller nick in the windshield. Otherwise the windshield looked good. I know that's important when cars are going out of the country. I'm not sure if they allow that or not. So there's a little bit of a contact chip right here and here and then adjacent on the hood but the hood has to be opened to see it. There's a small contact chip I'll show on the edge of the hood but it's inside the GM. You can't see it with the hood closed. Uh, the hood hinges or springs, the, you know, the hood protrudes just slightly above the cowl. Sign of a weak um, a weak hinge actually, not a weak spring. But the reflective quality of the paint is awesome. I really, really like the idea here and the colors and the, the concept. This is about the best looking green you can have. There's a few small little <clears throat> contaminations and whatnot in a few locations, but nothing that really jumps out at you. A little bit of what I would call uh, solvent pops right in this area. Um, but they're not breaking through the paint or anything like that. There's a better shot of them. Hard to see them, really. Take my squeaky shoes back over here. And again, just a little bit of similar dot contamination in the paint, but it's, it's a little more random here and there. Surface contamination. Looks like it's been there a while. I don't think it's going anywhere. A uh, color match on the car is really, really nice. Doesn't look like they painted some of it on a Tuesday and then the rest of it on a Thursday when it was raining. It looks like everything was all done uh, consistently. There's a small hairline crack I do not have on my exploded view there and a small little scratch right here in the top of the door frame I don't have on here. Otherwise, I have pretty much everything on there. It's a small little scratch here. 
and you get the idea. Nothing's really big. There's a little swell down here in the back of the door, but amazingly, the paint meter uh, sticks all around it. Below it, we got eight, or what do we got? Uh, let's try to do that again. Uh, 14. And 31.5. It's as high as the meter reads. And 25 above it. And 23 above there. So a magnet would still stick in here. So we just got a little bit of swell right there. No real splash issues to contend with. Now when somebody was putting the windshield molding back on, there's a few small um, contact chips. Can you see them there? Along that molding. They could stand to be touched up, nothing too bad. A couple little uh, pings in the roof that may not have gotten worked out. They're hard to see, you got to look for them. But they're the equivalent of a couple hail dents, maybe. And uh, here's one. Let's see. Can you see it right there? See it? There it is. There's one. It's a couple more maybe up here somewhere, but they're not very obvious. I don't think it would uh, concern me much, but that's just me. All right, let's take a look inside. Here's a quick look at the fluids. Transmission fluid is nice and pink. It did not smell burned. And the oil uh, looks nice. It kind of ran into the tranny fluid on this paper, but uh, it was uh, it was in good shape. And uh, a couple of vertical scratches here in the glass. But the tint probably did a nice job. Here's a horizontal one here and here. I doubt there's a ton of these glasses out there. There's a few little uh, bubbles and the green tint that didn't get worked out, but generally speaking, the glass is in nice shape. These windows did not get removed when the body was painted, but I think everything else came apart. I don't see overspray on any of the other trim. I guess I'll show you the back for starters. It's a very, very original interior, and the doors, again, are in just excellent shape. Uh, magnetically speaking, the door corners were reading in the low single digit numbers, so really good adhesion. So no rust or rod issues that I can see underneath the car or internally. Very, very solid car, probably kept in somebody's garage. Uh, these cardboards could stand to be replaced. There are guys that uh, would detrim that door panel if those materials are not available and uh, rebuild them. Seats in good shape. I remember my dad flying down the highway doing, who knows, 80, 85, whatever speed they were going at, smoking his pipe, and we were standing up back here with no seat belts on. And uh, pretty amazing how times have changed since the, since the 1960s. This would fold down further if I run the seat up. And uh, this needs to be re-glued on the back of the carpet kit. But that's all been uh, changed out, uh, or modified anyway. I could get my flashlight out actually to give you a better look. I've got still photos on though in here. Everything inside is original. And it's held up well. That's not original, and of course the tubs aren't original, but uh, you get the idea. All right, so the side panels, they're presentable trim was repainted in here a little bit of general wear in the headliner but nothing horrific doesn't smell funny it smells like 1962 if you've smelled that old car smell before this has it not a not a funky one it's not mildewed or anything it just has the old car smell steering wheels in fabulous shape added tilt column uh, custom gauges Placed in the pods. Sport Comp Monster Tech. It's hard to see in here with that green tin, isn't it? Brake pedal rubber is not in place. Promatic ratchet shifter. 
Door panels all have a little warpage to them at the bottom, but the trim generally is in nice shape with very little, if any, unusual markings. This armrest is about the most beat up piece in the interior. Dash paint's in nice shape. Rubber seals were all changed, I believe, because they're in really too good a shape. All the door skin lips look really nice, just like that. Door frames, uh, door shells, they were taken apart. Everything seems to have been taken apart. A few contact chips, you know, here and there. The doors have no major sag to them. A little material pull there. The seat locks and unlocks and moves as it should. The VIN's mounted properly. The cowl tag is mounted properly. Up underneath here, we've got a late model push-in style. Fuse harness, aftermarket switches. And uh, not much else to discuss, aftermarket uh, radio. Hood comes up nice and easy, and nothing that you wouldn't expect. A few paint chips, but the hood seams are in really solid shape. It doesn't look like anybody's bent the hood in the center. So the hinges never really got rusty or had any issues like that. Hood's in good shape. Down here, some untreated uh, fender bolts were used. Those could be removed and uh, cleaned up and take the oxidation off and paint them. Just a couple little details like that. Inner fenders have a uh, kind of a textured silver paint on them. Those would clean up a little bit too. You see a little bit of oxidation there. I broke my other good flashlight on the last job. I apologize, I'm using my other phone light to show you what's going on. Upper control arm mounts are in good shape. Car showing, I think, four or 5,000 miles. I have to go back and look at the odometer, but probably that's what's been put on it since it was done. Edelbrock um, fuel injection system, that's really cool. Don't smell any gas leaking. I heard it start up cold when they pulled it out of that spot right there for me, and the engine sounds really nice. Uh, no rattling, no smoke on startup. MSD a billet distributor, billet wire retainers, 8 millimeter wires, low slung pulley system. I couldn't get a read on the casting number on the back of the block. Too much stuff in the way. Upgraded uh, dual reservoir and brake servo system. That's really nice. So nice drivability put together on the car rack and pinion. Fuel injection. Big, fat, nasty rear end. I like it. Electric fans, a big two-core aluminum radiator. No rod or decay to be seen really underneath this engine bay. And um, that appears to be original paint on the firewall. If it has been redone, and it may have been, um, it's difficult to discern. Mounts all look really nice down there. Can't really show you that one on the video, but there you go. All right, let's take a pause and we'll fire it up. Getting towards the end of the day. Uh, ground temperature in here is 64. Top of the motor is uh, 75. Intake is at 89. Heads are at 95. We've had to pull it out of that spot about uh, two and a half hours ago. It didn't run very long because so I didn't want to get all smoky in here. All right. All right, key forward fuel pump is pumping up.
valve train noise, no unusual uh, deep black smoke. I'm gonna go pop that door open. We got snow last night, so uh, I don't want to kill myself here with exhaust fumes, but I don't think this car with the big fat tires down this hill is gonna go back inside. There's some additional uh, Touch screen, older touch screen, and some additional components of the fuel injection. I still have to open up the tailgate. We'll run through the lights. We got 50 pounds of cold oil, cold oil pressure. Water temp is not coming up yet. Brake pedal feels good.